Dear ladies and, and gentlemen, I will be very short. I'll speak only during two hours. <laughs> and um, uh, I don't pretend to present any theory of mediation. Uh, I just uh, want to talk about free, concrete cases of mediation, especially, I suppose, always that uh, speaking about crisis is, is better to Listen to the words, but watch the feed. And uh, I speak about civil war, which was in the 90s in Tajikistan, former Soviet Republic. Now this is absolutely forgotten war, but it was absolutely terrible. Thousands and thousands of uh, civilians which lived together during centuries killed each other. And um, uh, at the beginning, uh, neither in Moscow nor in Tehran, uh, other countries didn't care about this civil war, uh, had no idea how to stop this slaughter. And um, at the very, very beginning, just fewer academicians which had good contacts among Tajiks among so-called Muslim opposition and the forces which were against, uh, first of all, party of the Islamic Renaissance. So they began their conversations, their meetings. I suppose it was very risky. But what was important that the man who was the chair of this small group had great moral authority. Uh, some of the uh, <laughs> diplomats and uh, ladies and gentlemen which are involved in solving now Syrian crisis know this man, this is uh, academician Vitaly Naumkin with his perfect Arabic, with perfect knowledge of Koran and he traveled a lot. But during several years, from time to time, there were conclusions of the accords about cease uh, of the battling. But again and again, the battles restarted. And uh, there was impression that there would be no end to this civil war in small Tajikistan. And then situation changed drastically, not in Tajikistan, but in neighboring Kabul. In September 1996, Taliban captured Kabul, and then in January, 1997, they began attack on Panjir Valley. This is stronghold of Ahmad Shah Massoud of the Tajik community in Afghanistan. And Ahmad Shah Massoud understood that for him, just so is to survive, it's necessary to have stable situation in Tajikistan. And the efforts of these brave men and women, which looked as absolute utopic, that time appeared not just wasting time. And they created certain, certain possibilities to have negotiations. And uh, what was important that regional powers, Iran, Uzbekistan, of course my country, Russia, put a lot of efforts so as to have these negotiations and to help Tajik, Tajiks 
to find formula of the coexistence of the enemies and formula that time it looked absolutely crazy that former leaders of mujahid warlords become ministers and deputy ministers of the new united government and the paramilitary groups of the opposition would be engaged in the army, in the police. That sounded fantastic, but it was done. And during many years, we have difficult but peace in Tajikistan. Uh, just one moment. Uh, in 1996, uh, uh, I have been in Qum, and I spoke with some clerics, uh, asking them about their attitude to Taliban. Uh, I was shocked that the first answer was, it's unacceptable, their attitude to women. <laughs> it was said, it was said to me. Uh, next uh, case about what I want to, to speak, not positive. This is attempt to prevent war between Armenians and Azerbaijanis. That was autumn 1991. The agony of my previous country of Soviet Union when institutions were blocked, officers of the army didn't receive any orders from Moscow. At that time, we had two presidents, President Gorbachev, even for me, for Russian, very strange man. Uh, and other strange men, our president, Boris Yeltsin. They had struggled that time between, uh, in general, the winner, it was clear, was Boris Yeltsin. But nevertheless, he wanted to persuade population and politicians that he is stronger than Gorbachev in all the fields, including solving such dramatic conflict as conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh. He invited President of Kazakhstan, uh, Nazarbayev, to organize a meeting with leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan, President Terpetrosyan, President Mutalibov, and even the leaders of the local communities in Karabakh. And it was really political success, as all of them came. And they signed so-called Zhiliznovets communique. And uh, one of the point in this communique was creation of the group of observers. We should come to the region so as to control implementation of the communique. And so happened that I was mm, chairman in this group of observers. And uh, it was necessary uh, to help organize meetings between delegations of Azerbaijan and Armenia, but not only, uh, as really we were the single mediation group. And in spite of the fact that we had mandate to control implementation, uh, local people, when they had the problems of hostages, for example, they addressed to us. So we began to be involved in these difficult questions. And um, in principle, there was very small chance to prevent the war, but very small chance. Uh, from time to time, there were attacks of 
Azerbaijanis militia to Armenian villages. And there were Fedayin, paramilitary groups of Armenians. Once they attacked Azerbaijani militia, and for the first time, they were refugees, Azeris. That was shock for Baku, for Azerbaijan. At that time, they said, OK, we are ready to withdraw our militia if there were, would be withdrawal of Fedayin. And so as to control the situation, it was necessary to have more troops. And uh, I do my best so as these troops from Russia or from collapsing Soviet Union come to Nagorno-Karabakh. But all these attempts were blocked. It's interesting, but at the same time, by some leaders of Democrats and some leaders which were against democracy by Speaker Hasbulatov, but now he is dead, so in Russia he is about secret Boris Yeltsin and our Vice President Ruskoy. Three of these persons blocked. And then this chance is gone. Then it so happened that some of the leaders of Azerbaijan, some of my observers, uh, perished in helicopter and then Great War began. Uh, that was drastic experience, but I have absolutely the same opinion about this case and previous case, that mediators should work in spite of all the bad circumstances. And don't think whether it's possible to have positive results or not. Perhaps this is in terms of existential philosophy, philosophy which is now very popular, neither in the West nor in my country. And the last small episode about mediation, this is May 2013, uh, Donetsk region of Ukraine. Uh, in May, I suddenly received a telephone call from our former ombudsman of Russia, a uh, well-known person in my country, Vladimir Lukin, which raised just one question. Don't you want to go with me to Donetsk? There was why Donetsk. I said, no, OK, what I can say. Uh, in, in the plan, he explained to me that uh, his friend from Council of Europe, Mr. Jagund, addressed to him, asking to help save hostages, which were in the hands of the local militia in Slavyansk. So we came to Donetsk. First time, I was glad that I'm more than 60 years old, as for the Russians coming to Ukraine, which have less than 60 years old, for me, it's forbidden. Uh, and um, then we have very strange negotiations, first with the team of OSCE, which first said to us that they are ready to give us uh, cars to help us. Then they were from also mediator, as for us it was necessary to pass block posts of local militia and of the troops of Kiev. So it was necessary to have guarantee from both the sides. So far as local militia, for us it was easier. So far as Kiev, it was not easy. Uh, so the guys from OSCE spoke to Avakov, Minister of Interior, and he said always that he can't give any guarantee to us. Uh, there was some small group of local young men which helped us, and uh, 
there was impasse. Uh, but governor of Donetsk region, but he's a local man, in spite of the fact that he was nominated by Poroshenko. He wanted to, to speak to us. And we met him. And after so quite long conversation, he said, okay, I understood what you want. I suppose as his local man, he thought about his popularity in local population and then also he asked us to liberate not only observers of OSCE, there were gentlemen from Germany, from Poland, from Denmark, and from Czech Republic, but also uh, officers of the uh, general staff of Ukraine and of the uh, security force. And we said, okay. And, um, at last, as there was quite strange situation, we till the end didn't know there was guarantee or there was no guarantee from Kiev. Uh, but local governor tried to help us. So we managed to liberate these persons, including uh, Ukrainian officers. Uh, one moment when these persons from the team of OEC come to us and said that it's impossible and they are absolutely against that we come to Slavyansk, now, there was answer quite simple that in spite of all these recommendations, we would go as we have one argument, we are Russians. Just now, when I think about prospects of mediation, I understand that mediators more often de depend on military forces, yeah. on politicians. They should go against all the dangers, but there are mediation on different levels. I speak about the levels, local, the level of region, but now we are passing situation when we need a kind of global mediation. This is something absolutely new. As I suppose the kind of confrontation which we have now in the world, first of all between United States and my country. This is not as at the time of the Cold War. This is a great deal more dangerous. As at the time of Cold War, more or less we were about equal. From point of view of population, of economic potential, uh, of the potential in the sphere of mass media. Now, more or less, we have equivalent only in one field, in the field of nuclear weapons. And this is very bad. If we take such things as military budgets. Military budget of the United States adopted by Congress about 700 billion dollars. Second military budget in the world, not of Russia, of China, about 151 billion dollars. Our military budget less than $50 billion. You see the difference. United States have about 800 military bases in the world, more than in 70 countries. 
UK, France, Russia together have about 30 military bases in the world. And then at last, there is strategy, and I suppose this is combined strategy, to create global anti-missile system, which is, of course, first of all, against possibility of North Korea to strike United States and their allies. But this is global system. And step by step, United States create this global system. They organize tests, they create new types of anti-missiles. So, in certain time, there would danger that deterrence which have China and which have my country wouldn't work. At the same time, there is a strategy of global strike. to use not nuclear weapons, but weapons of high precision, which could strike objects in all the parts of the world during one hour. <coughs> so it's possible to begin the war not using nuclear weapons, but to strike nuclear weapons by these missiles without <coughs> nukes. I suppose that there are no country in the world now which want to have conflict with the United States. But at the same time, I understand that there are problems for United States as First problem, they don't know what to do with rising China. Economic growth of China is a great deal quicker than growth of the United States. How to stop it? What to do with this? No answer. Second, American elite at a certain degree frustrated by the war in Afghanistan and in Iraq. They spent a lot of money, they lost people, soldiers and officers. What the result? What they have now in Afghanistan? Majority of territory they don't control. If they withdraw their troops, as President Obama wanted, as President Trump wanted. How many weeks this government would survive? Weeks, not months. They spent a lot of money, uh, but also they received Iraq about which they dreamed in, in Washington DC, not at all. I understand this is problems, but it seems to me that having these problems, it's necessary to find such other kind of philosophy, perhaps something similar to philosophy which was proposed by our Chinese <laughs> colleague, but not thinking that global strike or anti-missile system would help this great country to solve its problems. And so as for us to be in rational way of development, I suppose we need a kind of mediation. But I don't know what kind of mediation. Thank you.